All right, let's jump into uh, topic number four here. We're uh, we're going to knock out the last two fairly quickly. Uh, interesting nugget today, and that would be that primetime Neon Dion Sanders is now working for Barstool Sports. Now, the only reason I found this funny is because he left the NFL Network, had an offer on the table from the NFL Network, and left it to go join and do a podcast for Barstool Sports. Now, his his whole thing on this was you have an audience with Barstool that you cannot reach on the NFL Network, and he wants to be able to motivate the youth, and he wants to be able to talk, and he wants to be able to have as open a voice as he can possibly have without being told what he has to say, etc. Now, if Port Norrell lets you say anything you, you want. You have got that And he'll right. let you criticize him. Oh, yeah. And I think there, that there this aren't is a lot of bosses be... that'll let you go on your podcast, on their platform, and let you dash them. No, and he you're will. right. And, and I think this is going to be fascinating. How I long until wait. Dion's a head coach in college? I'd, I'd still say a couple of years, probably. I mean, but he. I don't think he's going to get like a job like Florida State. I just don't think. No, that's going to but happen. there's there's like a million Florida schools. You don't think he could take that Boca Raton job? I mean, maybe. Yeah, I could a hundred percent. If um, Central uh, Florida keeps churning out just terrible coaches after terrible guys, Central Florida, South uh, Florida, yeah, South Florida, South Florida. I mean, I could I could see that. I could I could one hundred percent see him. At you don't like think FIU. he'd take one of those jobs? Shoot, like, I he, think he would. I think he'd take Florida International. I think he'd take something like that down there. One hundred percent. I think know? he'd take South Florida. But remember, Dion's got like some shady stuff in his past with uh with Who the cares? whole. Wait, wait, well, uh, college administrators care. <laughs> nah, they don't. They don't really care, Gary. But either way, it's, I'll, that was a long time ago. Quit bringing up old stuff, man. I'm just saying. I, I that was a long I think, time ago. I think this is a fascinating idea. Having him on Barstool will be a lot of fun because he can say it will be. whatever he wants to say, and I cannot wait to see him leave the NFL Network. And, I just want to know, is his podcast going to be entertaining? I, I'll tell you. I, I know Dion's I entertaining, but. I think he's got cool stories, and he's got some things that he could say, but I've listened to a lot of these old football players' podcasts. I don't listen to a single one anymore. Yeah, these these guys just aren't in. They're just not engaging enough to listen to week in and week out. Well, I they're think not. that's that's what we got to figure out about Dion, right? Because we know that he's entertaining on on a set. We know he's entertaining yes. with other people. But how much do you talk on a set? Exactly, right? He's good for pregame You're one shows. Of five or, or six people, you know. Yeah, I, I'm I'm curious. I'm incredibly curious to see exactly what's going to happen here, because uh, you know he hadn't had to talk this much. I don't think. I don't no. think he's ever hosted a radio show or done anything like that. Like. Talking on a podcast, you know, it, it took Chris and I a long time. We've been doing this for five years now. It took us a long time to get really, really comfortable and feel good about what we're putting out there. Well, it's not even about that. I feel like he's been in front of a mic and a camera long enough to where that's not an issue. It's what do you have to say? What do you want to talk about? Yeah. And is that entertaining to anybody? Um, now, everybody's going to listen at first. Oh, yeah. But, but and can you need he, to have can he some keep great me. stories at first. But once those stories are all gone, at some point in time, we you know you, you're going you to gotta, have some substance. You got to keep them coming. You've got to create content where content is not there, which is what we are trying to do every day since football is not real. You got that right. You got that right. Damien Estrada said, uh, "Just curious, Chris, where would you have Lovey Smith going?" Uh, nowhere. I don't know a single team that would want to bring Lovey Smith in as a consultant. I think, honestly, I think you've got a few defensive guys that are good enough that they'll get a call. Most of them are all going to be offensive gurus. That's yeah, a lot that's, of them. That's where the NFL was trying to figure out how much of this air raid spread offense can we bring in and, and, and not get figured out or picked apart or just unathletic. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, therein lies the problem with the air raid in college is it's a, it's a little bit of a gimmick uh, because normally you can't line up in the trenches and play somebody, and that's why you've got to run this offense. When when you can line up in the trenches, you know, are, are you completely cutting away a big part of your strength? Yeah. I don't know. 
I mean, and, and, and we'll see. There are going to be some defensive coaches that have gotten really good at being able to uh, stop these spread offenses, right? So I would yep. imagine oh, somebody... Oh, no, there's no doubt Dave Aranda will get a call from somebody. Oh, yeah, and, and Brent Venables as well will probably Brent, get Brent a Venables call. Brent Venables as well, yes. Yeah. Those two gentlemen will get a call from somebody. Yep, because they have gotten really, really good at slowing oh. down these uh, these high tempo spread teams. So, so yes, yes. Yeah. If I was if I was a coach in the AFC West, not named Kansas City, I would be calling these guys. Yep. And I'd be saying, "How the hell do I deal with this problem?" Oh yeah, oh yeah. I got a problem, and I need help solving it. Joseph Gomez said, "Dion Jr. got in his head. Risky move, but let's see." Yeah, I, it, I agree. It's a risky move, but I think it's just a one year thing. And we'll see what happens with Dion, but I'm uh, I'm excited about that. Alonzo Chico jumps in. He said, "Go Gators!" Hey, go Gators! Whatever, I'm in. Uh, Matt Miller said he gave up all that money so he could act like drunk uncle at the cookout. And that's kind of what the video that he put out came across as for Dion Sanders. But Look, uh, I'm not mad at him. I'm not mad at him either. Look, if you well, get here's paid the thing. To he do gave that, up money is a relative term. I doubt that he gave up any kind of money. Go. I, I was gonna say go into a place like Barstool podcasting. You can make a fort. Go. Somebody asked yeah. Joe Rogan how much you give up when you get into podcast. Yeah, no, he's he's making substantial. Adam Carolla, bank. Bill Simmons. Yeah, no, you can bank. you can make more money doing podcasting than you ever could sitting behind that news desk. Yep. Uh, Darren McCardle said uh, Dion's not coaching material. He can coach players, but not teams. Uh, John Ooh, L. I don't know about that. I, I mean, I don't know. We'll see. I, don't, I'd, I'd, if I was one of those smaller schools in Florida, I'd I'd at least make him say no to me. John Hill jumped in. He said, Lovey will be working at Ron Zook's bank anyway, so he's out. <laughs> uh, Damien said, damn it, why couldn't they take Romo instead of Dion? I'm tired of seeing Romo every Sunday. Uh, I'm no, not. I, I love Romo. I love Tony Romo. I Did love Did you Tony see Romo. ESPN? This is not on our stuff to talk about. ESPN's Monday night, the balls on these guys. They made an offer to Sean McVay. ESPN? This dude, I, it was one of the things that dropped down on my notif- notifications today while I was working. All right, now, At now some point look. in time, they made an offer to Sean McVay for the, This dude's only—he's still in his twenties. His name doesn't his his age doesn't have a three on it, and you think he's ready to hang it up? Uh, Can you find anything about that? Yeah, pro football talk from eight hours ago. Yeah, said ESPN I knew it was earlier to- today. What? <laughs> ESPN the talked bus? to Sean McVay Listen, you're about, talking about Shoot your shot. This the, all right, so it said John Gruden went from Monday Night Football booth to an NFL head coaching job. Another NFL head coach reportedly got a pitch from ESPN about making the opposite move. Andrew Marchand of the New York Post reports that ESPN approached Rams head coach Sean McVay about taking an analyst job for the Monday slate of games. Per, per Marchand, the network thinks McVay would be a standout in that role. Oh, McVay, I think he would be out uh, uh, just unbelievably amazing, but... He's been coaching for four years. He's made it to a Super Bowl. Uh, now, here's where it came from, all right? So, McVay did not take the job. He's preparing for his fourth season as the Rams. Oh, he didn't coach. take the job. Um, amazing. Imagine, that's a, right? That's n- just groundbreaking reporting right there. He didn't take the job. He said, uh, He said, while it would seem like a long shot that McVay would look for another line of work at the age of 34, he, oh, has, he is 30? Yeah, I would he's 34. not have guessed this man is 30. Uh, he has talked about the possibility that the workload required of an NFL head coach could lead to him burning out. A TV gig would offer a lot of money and far less taxing schedule, so it could come up for discussion again in the future. Now, uh, in the future, I think he's going to be unbelievable one day at it. Yeah. But if he walks now, man, that dude is super young. How, how long has he been the head coach? Four years? It, it, he's moving into his fourth season. And he's already so been the, super- So he's only been three years. Yep. Holy cow, you, th- you just wanted to hang up now? It's interesting. Oh, we it's would, interesting. That, that is shooting your shot right there. That is just, hey, you, you know, that the, the answer to every question you don't ask is no. So just, just whirl it up there and see what happens. Uh, as far as the Dion thing goes, uh, this article said, on the business side, it's another example of the transitioning of sports media personalities to new platforms and entities like Barstool that connects them with a younger demographic. The deal was born out of Sanders' son's affinity for the Barstool podcast Million Dollars Worth of Game. It was negotiated by Barstool CEO Erica Nardini and Sanders' representative Constance Schwartz-Marini, the co-founder of SMAC Entertainment. Uh, He said, this isn't a strategy. Um, He's Deion Sanders. You get a text message introducing you to Deion Sanders, you respond to the text. Uh, You get on the airplane. It was serendipity more than anything else. 
Like it. <laughs> yeah. No. When Dion calls and says, "I don't want to take this bunk ass offer from from the the NFL Network," yep. uh, what can we work out? Uh, let's start putting some numbers together. Yeah. And in a couple of hours.